John and Antonio, it would be also interesting to hear more about the risk pools. Uh, so for example, you've got the nuclear risk pool. Uh, how does a regulator in those markets play a role? And what would it mean for the Indian regulator to say, consider uh, you know, introducing blockchain into some of these risk pools that we have in India too? So, I mean, I think the interesting thing for for um, risk pools, so whether it's, you know, a terrorism risk pool or they're very often mandatory session of a certain amount of premium um, by, by, by law set by the regulators, they may manage the pool, they may have someone else um, manage, the, manage the pool. And that's the kind of work which depending on how that risk is getting in there, can be very manual. The process by which it's been set up, and I've read, read you know, a number of the sort of um, operating reports of national pools, terrorism pools, uh, flood pools, um, there's, they're investing in technology to make that more efficient. And, uh, and, and this is one where um, we, we, we have a strategy around pools because they are those natural networks um, where you know, I, I articulated how we intend to tackle nuclear pools, but that's really translatable to, to um, others. And I think um, more generally within blockchain, the regulators often we see them as a stakeholder. So it may just be um, reporting, which can, depending on the on the location, be quite manual, um, lottery keying. Um, we we see them being active participants in the network, um, where where they can see contemporaneous like risk accumulations and get a kind of a snapshot of what's happening. But but I think for us the um, often the regulations create the unique circumstances the almost the governance model, the federating mechanism by which you can then use the technology to make that more efficient. The IRDA is someone that we have spoken to about this in the past, and it's, uh, it's certainly um, something that's on our roadmap for the future to, to focus on those pools.